Hello everyone, welcome to text analysis with rapid minor tutorial. This is Reza Wazi and this tutorial is loosely based on Dr. Matthew Norse's data mining for masses book. Before we get into the rapid miner and conducting the text mining, let's get a better understanding of the case in hand. Uh, you probably know from high school that Federalist papers were written by three authors. And we know for a fact that paper number 5 was written by Jay, paper number 14 was written by Madison, paper number 17 was written by Hamilton. But historians have some suspicions that they are not sure about paper number 18. They suspect that paper number 18 is a collaboration between Madison and Hamilton. We want to see if we can help them by providing some analysis to help them correctly identify paper number 18, whether it's a collaboration between Madison and Hamilton or it's something else. We want to use text mining to get to the bottom of this problem and provide some extra information to help our historians make a better decision and make a better categorization for paper number 18. Let's go ahead and do this using text mining. And remember how we are going to do it? First, we are going to impose a structure into the text and then we are going to use one of the methodologies that we have learned in the past in the data mining to gain some insights into this case. Okay, text mining is a little bit different than data mining in that we do not import the text files into our repositories. We are going to use an operator to access the text files on our storage or on our hard drive. The operator is called read document. And if you don't see this, the read document, you probably have not installed the extension for text processing. You can see here it's under the extensions under the text processing. Let me drag and drop this into the process window and I'll show you where to go to download and install the text processing extension. You need to go to extensions and click on the marketplace. Once you click on the marketplace, you can search for text mining or you can search for text and um, one of them is text processing you can see it's here text processing for me is uh, installed version 7.30 so there is a newer version that I can go ahead and update I can select for update you probably do not have this one and you have to install it and I'm going to install the package Except I accepted the terms and conditions and now it's downloading to up update my text processing extension. And now it instructs me that my rapid miner needs to be restarted. I'll go yes, it says save changes to unnamed. No, I don't want to save any changes. I'll go ahead and restart. Okay, here is the rapid miner. It's back. Let me go ahead and once again drag and drop that read document into my process window and now I can go ahead and link it to the file that I want to use remember we had J Madison and Hamilton we had three papers one from J one from Madison one from Hamilton and we had the paper number 18 that we suspected is a collaboration let's go ahead and link the first one J one I'm going to go to where I already have these te text files on my hard drive and I'm going to link Federalist number 5 J to this read document. The read document will go ahead and read the paper and if you connect this one to the result you can see that paper in your results. Let's go back and I can rename this to J5 let me go ahead and read the other three documents this one is going to be 
Madison 14. Rename it to Madison 14. This one is going to be Hamilton 17. And the last one is going to be collaboration 18. Collaboration 18. Now, the next step is to use a text processor operator. It is called process documents. Go ahead and drag and drop it. And you can take both example set and word count to the results. And here you are going to connect your documents to the doc ports into the process document. As you've learned, process document is a nested operator. And how do you know that? By looking at this symbol, you know it's a nested operator. You need to go ahead and double click on it. Now, here you do all the processes that you want on your text files. Let's go ahead and first start first with tokenizing. Tokenizing will go ahead and group similar words together and will give you a word count. So let's go ahead and tokenize all of our texts. Here's the word list. You have the total number and in how many documents they uh, appeared. As you can see here, we have some stop words. We have A, we have AND, we have AND. Let's go ahead and get rid of our stop words as well. We have filter stop words for that. Uh, the filter stop words operator, you're going to choose the correct language. We are going to choose English. Now it's going to filter the stop words. Let's go ahead. Now you see that it got rid of all those stop words. Here, if you scroll down, you can see that the algorithm differentiates between capital words and lowercase words, between uppercase words and lowercase words. So in order to overcome this problem, you'll have to transform all cases. And I rather do that transformation before tokenizing. So I mean, you should do it before tokenizing, otherwise the tokenize will count them as separate words. It is called transform cases. And I just put it before tokenizing. Now everything is transformed, tokenized, and we got rid of all the stop words. And this is specific case we do not get into identifying engrams or uh, synonyms, but you have to be aware of those engrams and synonyms when you start working with texts that are not very familiar to you. So right now we are done with imposing a structure into text. So we impose a structure into text and you can see in the results we have a word list and we have some sort of example set output that refers to each of our documents and we have word weights. So the next step is to use one of the methodologies that you have you have already learned to group similar observations into each other. The logic is that each of these authors have a specific style and based on that, that style they have a specific choice of words. So J will use its own choice of words. Madison has its own choice of words. Hamilton has its own choice of words. So if paper number 18 is a collaboration between Madison and Hamilton, it should have the choice of words of both Madison and Hamilton. So it's basically a grouping problem. 
or in other words, it's the clustering problem. So what methodology should I use? Think about it. It's k-means clustering. So let's go ahead and use k-means clustering. Okay, what should the number of k be here? Should it be 2, 3, or 4? How many groups do I want to identify here? Let's go to the problem again. We know that there are three authors. We identify three papers, paper 5 with J, paper 14 with Madison, paper 17 with Hamilton, and we suspect that paper 18 is a collaboration between Madison and Hamilton. So how many groups do we need to tell us more about our suspicion or to tell us more about our theory? Think about it. If you have two groups, J should be in its own group. But Madison, Hamilton, and collaboration, the number 18 should be on a separate group because these three, the collaboration, is the most similar to both Madison and Hamilton. But these are the most different from J. So if you are using clustering, such as K-means clustering, that works based on the similarity between observations, the distance between observations, J should be on a different cluster and a different group, and number 18, paper number 18, should be a cluster that is very close to 17 and 14. So you should theoretically be able to group 14, 17, and 18 together, and J separately. So we are going to leave the k at 2. We are going to group these or cluster these observations into two groups and we are hoping to get j in its very own group and the other three in the other group. Let's go ahead and run this and see what will happen. Let's go to cluster model. We got two clusters. Let's go to folder view. Click on it. Okay, each cluster got two members. It did not turn out to be what we wanted. Let's go ahead and take a look at the members. So, cluster 0, member 1, we got J there. Let's go to and let, take a look at member 2. We got Madison. So we got Madison and J in one group and you can imagine that Hamilton and 18, the suspected collaboration in another group or cluster. So why this happened? We in fact know that number 18 is a collaboration. We just wanted to see if text mining can help us also to get to that point. To answer why this happened, you need to think about the training data. Remember one of the problems in the previous assignments that you had with the training data was that you did not have a representative or balanced training data. Here is the same. You do not have enough training data. You have to provide more examples of these papers so the algorithm can actually group them better. It will have more bases to compare and for, uh, form clusters. Now you can either go ahead and provide more Madison and Hamilton or you can go ahead and provide more J's. If you are going to provide more Madison and Hamilton, you have to provide twice as many papers as J's. So I'm going to increase the number of J's to see if you are going to have one group of J's and the other group of Madison, Hamilton and 18. Let's go back to design and then I'm going to add more papers. Read document. This time I'm going to add J number four. Let's run it one more time and see what will happen. Go to the cluster model. I've got three members in one cluster and two members in another. Let's see and check, take a look at cluster number one. 
got one Hamilton here. I got 18, the collaboration here. Again, you can imagine that two J's are here and one Madison. Let's go ahead and give it one more J. J number three and run it go to the cluster model we got three members in each cluster let's take a look at cluster zero we got Federalist number 14 we got Federalist number 17 so we got Madison and Hamilton Let's see if the last member is the co suspected collaboration or not. Yes, it is. So it's Federalist, Federalist number 18, which is the collaboration. Now we have Madison and Hamilton in one group and all the J's in another group. So just to repeat again, when you're working with text mining and text analysis, first you need to impose a structure and then you can use descriptive methodologies that you've learned in the past to analyze the structured text or the structured data. There are other text mining methodologies such as sent sentiment analysis, which does not make you to impose a structure as you did right now and can go ahead and analyze text or the text frequency uh, analysis that can generate those cool graphs with the most repeated words in bigger fonts uh, there are other text mining and uh, text analysis methodology that was not covered in this lecture in this tutorial but you should know that generally you will go ahead and impose some structure and then you will use already known methodologies to derive more meaning or to discover trends. Hope you liked this tutorial and this concludes our tutorial on text mining.